Hi. Another little chatty video about um, about picks and my choice and how I develop my preference uh, for picks or plectrums as we call them here in the UK. This box is something that I've had for many years and this is the collection of plectrums um, from the Martin company that I had. Uh, they were called the Natural Tone, most of them are called the Natural Tone series and they were made in either nylon or, um, or Delrin. So when I started playing in bluegrass bands and things like that in, I suppose, the early 70s, mid 70s, I started playing with one of these, which is a Martin 73 million, 73, 0.73 of a millimeter. It's very soft and flappy, very, very thin pick. And I was probably playing like this. <laughs> very basic strumming and let's think about the notes treble is very thin I'm pressing quite hard to get a little bit of energy out of that string but it's easy on the hand at first let's take it to the other extreme the Delrin 1.2 which I worked up to over some years gives me a good hard the strongest treble and more projection which I needed with um, a very very loud banjo player and uh, the usual things that you would expect in bluegrass bands and I stuck with these for many, many years. In fact, when my favorite one was the black one, which was a nylon 1.12 millimeter. You know what a teardrop looks like. Um, and when I heard that they'd been discontinued, I found an online shop that had a stock of 40 of them and I bought them all and emptied their stock. Um, but it really, I really started rethinking my ideas about plectrums when this whole thing about blue chip picks came into being a few years ago. And like many people, I took the attitude that it was a scam. Basically getting us guys that had reasonably expensive guitars to think, yes, we'll play a hundred times more for the thing we hit the strings with. because that should be the thing to do. I thought it was an absolute con. And I got one. I can't remember how I got it now. I don't know whether I got it off of eBay or um, a friend sent it to me or sold it to me. Probably sold it. And the first one I got just happened to be the 346 dies triangle. And I'd never really bothered with a triangle before. But oh. Changed my flat picking rhythm style. I'm freezing cold today, it's a very cold, windy day, um, so my hands aren't very warm. But I changed my style, but the blue chip, as much as I wanted to hate it, I didn't. I couldn't. So I investigated all others. I like it converted me straight away to the um, to the triangle arrangement. Three points not as sharp in the tips as the teardrops, and three of them. So I started looking around for all the different types of um, triangle size three, design 346 by other makers, and I found the other one which was uh, Vegan, highly respected, well-established name, um, made in the Netherlands by a sculptor. <laughs> And I noticed more than ever with this particular one that it had a bevel along each side, all six sides of it, um, and it had um, something that enabled me to grip. This is a Vegan TF 
don't know what that stands for. Tony Fox, um, 140. I also have some 120s. Um, so that's in millimetres. The, the blue chips are in thousandths of an inch. That's a tad 40, which means 40,000, which equates pretty much to one millimetre. Um, so I, I, I thought that the Vegans were pretty good. They were 15 euro for three, I think, of the TFs. And, and I tried some other things that I didn't like. The Dunlop Prime Tones came out, which um, in two forms, one was an amber one, and one was um, some sort of material that looks a bit like a, 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 a blue chip. This is the amber one, 1.5. It's okay, but um, doesn't really turn me on. And the the solid thing, which feels absolutely dead in my hand, isn't there's no m flexibility. And I think, and th this is an important part. What do you expect? What's what qualities do you need in a plectrum? Uh, you, you need it to be thick enough to bring out the bass and the treble um, equally. You need it to have a certain amount of flexibility so you can kind of feel the string through the pick, but not too much. Um, and you need to have just a certain amount of attack. Now I'm going to go back to my blue chips. After a while I gave up looking for alternatives and I invested rather strongly in blue chip picks. I have a blue chip pick, at least one blue chip pick for every guitar that I own, every flat pick, flat top guitar that I own, and a few more. Um, and I've got here as an example a Tad 40, a Tad 50 and a Tad 60, which is going one millimeter, 1.25 and um, 1.5. Now, thickness isn't the be-all and end-all because materials density varies. But for the blue chips, I'm just going to compare those. This is the Tad 40 on, a, on medium gauge strings on a dreadnought. It's a Tad 50. Which to me give me a little bit more bass, but still optimum attack. Maximum attack on the D40. Tad 40, what I would call optimum there. When I get to a Tad 60, which I know a lot of people like, I'm feeling a little bit of dullness. So for me, the Tad 50 is ideal for medium gauge strings on a dreadnought, whereas a Tad 40 is ideal for light strings on a smaller guitar. And that's what I've settled with. Light strings, 40, medium strings, um, 50, or 1.25 and one millimeter. Excuse me, I have to keep doing this. The other thing um, that is important in the quality of a pick is the finish. And the, the other thing that the blue chips taught me was the aspect that they call a speed bevel. And that is filing that edge down so it goes along with the string. So when, when the string is hitting, when the pick is hitting the string, it's sliding off. With the blue chip, you have you have two things to assist you with that. You have this seemingly, I don't know whether I'm using the correct terminology, but um, a low coefficient of friction. There, there, there's nothing there. There's less resistance when I'm hitting the string on uh, using whatever material they make blue chips with, but also that bevel helps a lot. And I can prove that because I started just this last year. I've been pretty much stuck in the house when I wasn't in hospital. Um, and I started playing around with trying to recreate that speed bevel arrangement. And the, 
the picks that I found most applicable to this experiment were Dunlop Tortex 1.14 purples like that that is where how they come out of the box and that is after I've been messing about with it for a while cutting a bevel on it and I shall show you the difference this is how it comes in my opinion a good pick which is unfinished so it has a matte finish um, and it has no bevel just a, a little bit muddy this is one that I've beveled and polished Good sharp treble. And an, an, an optimum, I would say, amount of attack. Is it as good as a blue chip? Is it gone? No, it's not bad. But that's $35, and these are probably. Um, 30, 40 pence each or something like that. Um, I also tried uh, D'Andrea um, Proplex. These are one and a half millimeter ce um, celluloid picks. Uh, they were another respectable make that made the 346 size, so I thought I'd try it. That sounds to me rather dull. But after I've filed one up for a while, see the treble difference. So you can buy a blue chip, many other things. Um, you can, you can, whatever suits your style and your comfort. Um, the harder the pick, the more effort you're going to put into getting the sound out of the guitar but you will probably get more more power out of the guitar you'll be moving the strings more than a strumming um, than a thin strumming pick uh, but if they in, if the pick is made out of good material that has the least amount of friction when it hits that phosphor bronze string or whatever um, and the point of that pick is well shaped with that speed bevel you're going to get somewhere near optimum. Uh, just to finish off, this is an ancient, slightly beveled, uh, 70 point, um, as 70 thousandths uh, tortoise shell. Just want to compare that with the Tad 60. Not much difference, but the tortoise shell as much as everybody craves about it, it wears enormously and it breaks. And of course it's illegal. This is a 45 tortoise shell. I'll compare that to the Tad 40. If I was do a, to do a blind test, would I be able to tell the difference? Frankly, no. So don't knock yourself out trying to buy illegal tortoiseshell. I've done it. I've got them here. Um, actually, that I, these used to be made by a chap in the north of England who used to go around um, the antique shops and things looking for tortoiseshell stuff and turn them into um, into plectrums. Uh, he's long gone now, but um, I bought a few, and I think those probably came from that era. I've got a lot of other tortoiseshell plectrums that I bought legally in shops but they're all too thin because I was still at the strumming stage then. So they're all usable but you want initial attack not too much not a clack um, and not a but but you some sort of initial um, point of impact uh, and then you want something that's going to move that string as best as you can as best as it can and you want speed 
So that's in the shape of the end of the pick and the speed bevel really does work. So um, just some points to think about and I hope that's been useful. Thank you.